Welcome to another episode of the Movie Brothers. I'm Ant, and this is Kev. Thank you for joining us once again. Kev, how are you, sir? I'm doing pretty good, my brother. How are you? Man, I'm blessed, man. I can't complain. Hey, glad to be here with you guys. We are reviewing Barbershop 3, The Next Cut. All right, this film is rated PG-13, has a runtime of one hour and 52 minutes. This is a comedy. Kev, I gotta tell you, man, even when the first Barbershop came out, what, back in like 2002, uh -huh. uh, it brought back so many fond memories of just growing yeah. up, uh, you know, going to the barbershop. Mm -hmm. Yes, y'all, once upon a time, I did have hair. Okay? We both did. I, you know, I, I, I did go every week, uh, every two weeks to get a fresh cut, believe it or not. But, uh, man, what's your fondest memory? Uh, I'm, sure you, I'm sure you have mem uh, many, but uh, experiencing experiences of going to the barbershop. You know what, uh, besides all the experiences that I had going to the barbershop, taking my son for his first haircut at the barbershop, mm -hmm. that was a very, very powerful experience for me. And you know, I mean, it did, you, did you cry? Put a, no, I put a lump in my throat, but I didn't cry. You know, I, I didn't care. cry, I kept, <laughs> I kept mine. All right, but the bottom line is that um, the importance of a barber and a barber shop in the community is, you know, I mean, it's, it's it's, that's huge. Staple in the community, that's especially huge. black community, man. And a good barber is not only a barber, but they're also a counselor. Yeah. All right, real yeah. talk. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. And my earliest memory of going to the barber shop, man, it was this lady named Miss Murray, man. <laughs> Dude, and I, and I don't know how, at that time, maybe she was in her 70s or something, but she could uh, cut. Yeah. I mean, she could get down with the best of them, but there was only one flaw, man. She would eat her lunch at the same time as <laughs> cutting your hair. So you just know. spewing food particles yes. all into your hair. Yeah, so you had everything. to, you know, had to might have to <laughs> dust some crumbs out your head at the end of the cut. But uh, you know, it was what it was, man. And like nowadays, right? We go, we make appointments, right? If you go into uh -huh. the barber shop because everybody's pressed for time. But back in the day. There were no appointments, man. You, you showed man, up. You show up and you wait. That may be an hour, that might be two hours, and dude, like the little hustle in junior high school, the trick was go get your hair cut the day before, right? Uh -huh. Thursday, Friday, then show up the next day and just sell your spot. Right. So you can earn an extra money, like, right? 10, 20 bucks, whatever. Mm -hmm. At least enough to pay for the cut, right? Yeah, you you basically subsidizing your haircut by getting there early the next day and That's right. standing in line or whatever. Yeah. So Look, That's the, game. The, the the litmus test for an official barber, you got to know how to use that razor. If you do not line with a razor, you're not a fisher. <laughs> I'm just going to say it, period. And I, I, took, mean, I took a business trip to Manila, the Philippines one time, and got there, needed a haircut, brought my clippers, thought I was going to do myself. But, you know, I did not take into consideration the fact that their power cords and their little <laughs> plugs are much more powerful than ours. I blew up my clippers yeah. after giving myself a chili bowl. Mm -hmm. uh, needed somebody to cut it. They had a barber on site there in the hotel that I yeah. was staying in. And she cut me up. Gave me one of the best haircuts I ever had. Really? With, not even with clippers. With a pair of scissors and a razor. Wow. Okay. Gave me one of the best haircuts I ever had. So, I mean, the, the importance of a haircut. <laughs> and I had a business meeting the next day, so yeah. I couldn't I couldn't go in there looking crazy. Bay got to be tight. It had to be All tight. 24-7, right, so that's what's up. Hey, we're here for round three with Barbershop. Calvin and his crew are back. They're still cutting heads left and right, trying to maintain some sense of normalcy uh, in the shop while the surrounding neighborhood is making a change for the worse, right? right? They're in South Side Chicago, dealing with all the violence, and things are not looking good. This film was directed by Malcolm D. Lee, who brought us the Best Man series of films. Mm -hmm. uh, Best Man Wedding coming out fairly soon. Yep. Uh, it stars Ice Cube, Regina Hall, uh, Dion Cole in his in his first uh, well actually yeah. he was in uh, he was in a previous barbershop I really didn't realize that before God. I sat and watched it and uh -huh. he had you know he was, he was he didn't really have a speaking role but yeah he but he was there. in there okay yeah. he was in the shop he was in the shop yeah uh, Anthony Anderson Cedric the Entertainer returns and um, you know a host of other people I mean the, the list is long and yeah. illustrious for this film what do you say we take a look at the, the trailer let's do it I got robbed the other day I got robbed twice and got my ass beat by the second robber for giving all my money to the first uh-uh she wasn't playing <laughs> this neighborhood was always rough but there's something different going on 
Hey, shooting out there. I don't want to die a virgin. Get your old ass down, man. I ain't getting down there. It take me too long to get back up. Meanwhile, we got to raise Jalen in this mess. You don't understand how dangerous it is out there. Y'all need anything? Y'all straight? We got to take our streets back. We put our minds together. We going to get some solutions. So much love for everybody in this neighborhood. Turn that up! Yeah, this gotta be some of my best work. I bet he won't be talking back to his mama no more. <laughs> Give me George Jefferson. No, no, no. <laughs> okay, hey, you know, typically the third installment of any franchise. You get to the point where you're digging at the it's bottom the of, of death, the barrel. It's the kiss of death. You're digging at the bottom of the barrel, but not in this case. No. Listen, straight up, this is arguably the best yes. barbershop out of all three. No doubt. Okay, and I'm going to start out giving credit to uh, Kenya Barris, you're a creative writer for uh, Blackish, Tracy Oliver, uh, Mark Brown. They did a great job on the script for this film. Right. Um, you know, Calvin is still, you know, like I said, he's cutting heads and everything, but the neighborhood's changed. Right. And there's violence everywhere, and you know that's a, a, affecting everyone on many different levels, right? right? right from a right. personal family perspective, from a business perspective, uh -huh. uh, and so on. And that's where our story, you know, takes us here in this third third installment. Yeah, Barris Oliver and Brown, uh, they make blackish must see TV in my household. Uh, because of all the teachable moments, you know, for my kids. Uh, so our family gets together, we watch it. Um, Barbershop has matured over the years into uh, something much more intelligent, much more uh, mature than the trappings uh, that it was trapped in when it, when it first came out. You mm -hmm. know, it had some very juvenile sensibilities <laughs> early, yeah. early in its, in its uh, incarnation. But no uh, Barbershop 3 is much more mature, much more solid uh, entry into the franchise. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it's very well done, very well done. Um, it's given us something smart, something topical, and something that I didn't really expect. I didn't really expect something poignant, Yeah. okay? That's what I didn't expect, but there's a lot of poignancy in this film as well. Yeah, Kev, I couldn't agree more. Uh, the trip thing is, you know, they were able to tackle many different relevant, right, current issues that we are dealing with uh, in our society without being preachy, right. right? They were still able to dial in the funny. You yeah. know, this at the end of the day, the film still is a comedy. Um, and so, you know, I was laughing left and right throughout this film. Yeah. Um, you know, what Barbershop is able to accomplish is where I had issues with in films like, say, for example, Dear White People, where I felt like they tried to tackle too much, right? right. Or where Chirac was, right? They tried to be funny, it wasn't funny. They, you know, trying to preachy. talk dirty. It was a little bit preachy. It was too preachy. But, um, you know, Barbershop was able to navigate all of that and get around it right. and, and do it in a successful way. And uh, I could really uh, appreciate that and, and enjoyed that fact in the film. Absolutely, I agree. Uh, I loved how um, the humor flows much more organically in this film mm -hmm. than it does in some of the others. When you have a film that is comprised of so many comedic talents, mm -hmm. comedic actors, you feel like you gotta try to shoehorn them in and find mm -hmm. some way, find some scenes for them, so on and so forth, but it seems forced. Yeah. In this film, it doesn't. Uh, everyone seems to be on top of their game for the most part. Every now and then, you'll feel like, okay, so-and-so's gotta get some screen time, so let's get them on. But for the most part, you know that type of forced dynamic is not there and it is much more organic and smooth and I really enjoy that. Um, the Best Man series, okay, let's talk about the Best Man series. It's one of our favorite series mm -hmm. of, of black films, you know, currently. Um, because of how smartly written they are and how well the ensemble cast works together, the job that, that Malcolm Lee, uh, D. Lee does with that. Uh, there's a lot to be taken from that series and applied to this one in terms of 
how these characters all act to one uh, towards one another, mm -hmm. how they all integrate together, and uh, everybody has their due. Everybody has their time in, in this to shine, and uh, they do a very very good job. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Um, Got to give comedic credit to uh, Dion Cole. I first saw this brother uh, on the small screen, right on Blackish. Yes. Is very funny, uh, very very funny in this film. I'm looking forward to seeing him in, in, in future projects. I hopefully hopefully he gets those opportunities. Yeah. Uh, Cedric, Cedric the Entertainer, man. Um, he I'm is. Sad. And, and, and going into it, I thought I was gonna be like, man, I'm so sick of seeing Eddie. And is he gonna be talking about these same <laughs> the old same old thing. ass jokes uh, and stuff? But it was fresh. And he's funny and it was on point. Uh, Lamorne Lewis, um, he's in there also. Yeah. Funny guy. Um, Ice Cube. Yeah. Great job, brother. Hey, man, this is probably the best uh, acting performance I've seen from you in some time. Yeah, it's because, not just a series of scowls. Yeah, it ain't, it ain't the, the, the Cube meme mug. Uh, brand thing i know that has its place and uh -huh. and i've seen it in other films you heard me talk about it, that i didn't like it it ain't there in this one right and you don't need it because right. you did a great job i was able to connect with you he you actually acted in this film the connection and, that he has between the, with his son and his wife is very telling okay that that lets us know just how much he's grown as an actor yeah man and that he can actually bring that across and do it skillfully i mean so that was well done you could identify with him being an entrepreneur being a uh -huh. father being a husband it right. all worked it was dead on the money uh we got our girl as kev mentioned regina hall is in this film too now what i will say was when well, she did a great job right I'm used to seeing her being a comedic actor, right. and she's more straight laced in this one. And maybe that's just it is what it is. Yeah, and I mean, was Regina just Hall was has written. Regina Hall has a whole bag full of, of tricks that she can pull, you know, from her acting bag. I mean, she, I've seen her do drama, I've seen her do comedy. I mean, she can do everything. Yeah. And in this film, she's asked to be more of the straight laced character. Yeah. Okay, the sensible character. She's not there to you know yuck it up right to, yeah to, to pull a lot of funny out of it but she does a great job what she does and she's a welcome addition as is common okay common yeah is a great common addition common brought to, it too to the cast yes thank you okay common brought it as well did All a right. great job Nicki minaj okay Nicki minaj surprised me in that she's capable of actually bringing some pathos to the role um how did I, how did her booty do <laughs> her booty did an outstanding booty. job <laughs> but that's how neither that's how the booty do that's neither you know there's he leave it to ant you to know, bring us down to the gutter yeah sorry okay. um, i digress but you know she could have been a distraction she really wasn't she no fit she in wasn't with the cat with the rest of the cast and she performed well she did a good job that's right that's right hey um Kim, can we uh, throw some points on this thing man? yeah let's let's do it Listen, for me, all in all, if you can't tell, I enjoyed this film. I liked it. I highly encourage you to check it out. Right. For all you haters out there, right? I just said I just turned the switch. You did turn the switch. All you My haters gosh. that say, well, dang, Aunt, they, they cursing in this film and they using the N-word, but you was tripping about Hateful Eight and you was tripping, tripping about Meet the Blacks. All right, let's, was, let's, let's say that till the very end. Cause no, I got something we, I want We, to we are at the on. end, aren't we? Am I not throwing well, points on this? I, I, got, I got to say my say. Too. Well, you can yeah. say your piece too when you All get right. to it. All right. But listen, I mean, hey, man, it was done correctly. Uh -huh. I have nothing to say about it. Yeah, it's used in this film, but it was it was in its proper context. I ain't tripping about that in this film. It gets an eight out of ten. Right. Kev. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, not sir. Gonna leave, I'm not gonna leave you out, brother. Thank you, sir. Never. Thank you, sir. Uh, Malcolm Lee is said to have used the Big Chill, the 1980s film ensemble piece, as an inspiration for the movies that he's making today, uh, as far as The Best Man and even this film, uh, uh, you know, Barbershop. Uh, he's, uh, he, he likes to be able to bring characters together, use them appropriately, use them the correct amount in order to have something, you know, something fluid. You know that we can actually you know jump into and and enjoy and i think he does that in this film he does a magical job of bringing these characters together giving everybody the correct amount of screen time uh when they very easily could have pandered to this person or that person to make sure they got more screen time than someone else uh he he's managed to juggle that very well um to your point though about you know some of the some of the so-called haters out there who got mad 
refer to us as uppity, you know, nigas or ninjas. <laughs> ninjas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uppity ninjas. Uh, because we did not like uh, what was that film? Meet the Blacks. Meet the Blacks. Um, I'm sorry, dude. I apologize if we came off of. Uh, I don't. In the wrong way toward you know to you, but the bottom line is that you know you can't ha hate somebody for having an informed opinion about something, even if you disagree with it. Okay, um, I do disagree with your use of the term uppity ninja, uh, especially since this is not 1960. But <laughs> but at any rate, uh, the bottom line is that. If you want to see a film that shows and shows what African Americans and our culture, our life is like in its most beautiful and uh, most respectful elements, watch a film like Barbershop 3. Uh, something that I felt like Meet the Blacks just simply did not do. Okay, so the bottom line is that hey, I give this film an eight out of ten. I think it is that good. I will be adding it to my collection of films. Okay, and I think that you should too. Absolutely, absolutely. There, there it is. Um, so, man, you get an A from me. You get an A from Kev, Kev too, man. You're not, you're not copying off of me, Kev, are you? No, man? no, no. no. I'm, I'm not, I'm not copying. I'm, I'm not pandering. Man. I'm not doing anything. Hey. I'm just being honest. That's okay? what it was. Well, this hey. was a very entertaining movie. The movie sister enjoyed it as well. So, hey, you know what? What else can I say? This is the ultimate date film. Take somebody that you love, that you care about, that you want to get with to this film. You will both leave out in a much better mood than when you got there. There it is. Okay, I think we're telling you, you need to see this film. Fellas, get a fresh cut if you need one before you take your lady out to go see it. You know, I would advise that, but that's our show for you today. All right, be sure to check us out on Instagram at The Movie Brothers. Or you can follow us on Twitter at The Movie Brothers as well. Or better yet, check out our website, www.themoviebrothers.com. There where you can find not only links to our, you know, our show, our YouTube show, mm -hmm. but you can also find written reviews that we've done for movies that we don't shoot an episode for. So there's all kinds of stuff out there, all types of content that you can find. Go check it out. Yep. And last but not least, subscribe to this channel. Yes. Okay. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe so you can get instant notifications anytime we post any new content and spread the word. Tell or your people about the show. This, or even this, if you have a criticism, we don't shy away from that. Okay. Uh, it's easy to criticize somebody over a computer. You know, next time we have one of our night outs, you know, where we do, you know, <laughs> show up at the theater, you know, come holler at us then, okay? We'd be more than happy to have some intellectual discourse with you about whatever it was that you now, were Be careful now, you want to invite some thugs to <laughs> <laughs> the drive-thru. That's true, that's <laughs> but, true. But no, any commentary that you have, good or bad, you know we do respond. We look at everything, so we do comment and respond and we invite you to do that, so please participate. Thank you for tuning in. Yes. Uh, we are the Movie Brothers. I'm Ant, this is Kev, and this is the place the one and only place where we bring you nothing but the real, real on the real, real. pace.